Hi. If you're considering purchasing the M1 Mac Mini, two things that you're probably concerned about are the number of ports available on the M1 Mac Mini and the number of displays that you can drive. Now, most people know that you can work around the number of display problem with a tool called Display Link, but that's got its own problems. I'm going to discuss those problems and tell you how to solve them right here in this video. Building your business one night at a time. Hi, my name is Mark Mason. I'm an internet marketer and technologist. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about my new M1 Mac Mini. I love this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. And as I'm sure you've heard in all the other reviews, the M1 Mac Mini is simply amazing. It runs Final Cut Pro faster than anything I've ever seen, and it's just generally a joy to use. I use it for all my marketing tasks and all the other things that I normally would use on a Mac. And in fact, I've essentially set my fully loaded 16-inch 2019 MacBook Pro aside. I don't even use it anymore. The main reason that I ditched the 2019 MacBook Pro, especially for video, is fan noise. The M1 Mac Mini actually has a fan, but I haven't even been able to get it turned on, whereas my 2019 fully loaded MacBook 16-inch MacBook Pro it sounds like a jet engine every time I turn on my video software. So this is a much better solution for videography. It's a much better solution for video editing. And the bottom line is I love my M1 Mac Mini. But there are some limitations, most of which everyone knows about. And the big one is you can only drive two HDMI or uh, display port monitors with the Mac Mini natively. The problem is the way the chip is configured in conjunction with limitations in the operating system, you can only recognize two native monitors at one time. Now, it's been widely publicized that you can use a tool called Display Link to work around this. Display Link is an awesome video adapter that works as a USB device and it extends the displays and people have reported running up to six displays on the M1 Mac Mini with using Display Link technology, which is really cool. And in fact, right now, as I'm recording this video, I'm actually running three displays and the third display is running using Display Link. The issue with Display Link is actually there are two issues that bug the living crap out of me and probably other people as well. One is when you're running Display Link, the technology that's being used actually presents itself from an operating system standpoint as a screen copying device like ScreenFlow or some other kind of screen capture technology. That's the the part of the operating system that the display link people are exploiting when they write the video drivers for their display link tool. And it works absolutely fantastically, except in cases where you're also trying to run video with copy protection. So one of the things that I often do is I want to watch ESPN in a window while I'm doing other work. Say I'm monitoring a football game or sports. More importantly, I want to watch the Cowboys on Fox Sports Go. Those kind of technologies, including Apple TV, they have copy protection that won't let you copy a video using technology like ScreenFlow. And since Display Link uses that same technology, those programs think that your Display Link monitor is trying to steal content, and so that video gets blacked out. This is super annoying and drives me absolutely crazy. The other thing that bugs me is that Whenever the Display Link technology is on, for the same reason, your Apple computer thinks that the display is being watched. And as you probably know, whenever you're in screen sharing mode on the login screen, you get this very um, scary message that says your display is being monitored. Now that's bad enough in and of itself, but it's not that big a deal except Apple Watch unlocking does not work whenever your screen is being monitored. I'm not really sure for the reason for this, but I do know that whenever the screen thinks it's being monitored, 
The login screen is aware of this and that turns off Apple Watch unlocking. This is a problem for the Mac Mini because without a touch sensor like you have on a laptop, Apple Watch unlocking becomes the way that you keep from having to type your password in every time the screensaver locks the screen. I've got solutions for both of those problems and I want to share those with you now. So let me share my screen here and show you what I've done. I've done a couple of things. So the first thing I've got over here on the left-hand side, which is pretty um, simple and straightforward, is I've got some Screen Deck macros that turn the Display Link Manager on and off. So if I'm in a particular situation and I want to turn what is in my case Display 3 off, or on, I hit this keyboard manager button and it toggles the state of the display link drivers. So you can see over here in the toolbar, we've got the display link driver running here and this macro on the, um, on the stream deck will actually turn that driver on or off. And that's a very simple thing that I accomplish with something called Keyboard Maestro. You can see over here I've got a screen, screen deck macro and whenever I want to turn display three on or off, you can see I check to see if it's running. If it's running, I quit it and if it's not running, I start it. Very simple. So that's good. If I want to watch a football game, I don't need Display 3 at the moment. I can hit that button, turn Display Link off, and then that content in Apple TV or on ESPN will run just fine. No issues. The other problem is this idea of being able to log in with the Apple Watch. And really what you need in that case is that you need Display 3, in my case, or whatever your Display Link display is, to be off whenever the screensaver is on and on whenever the screensaver is off. And that way, at the time that the Apple Watch goes to unlock the Mac Mini, the M1 Mac Mini, Display Link will not be running and the unlocking will work automatically. That's an absolutely magical feature of a Mac. And if you haven't ever experienced that, it is actually worth buying an Apple Watch, in my opinion, just so you can automatically unlock your laptop or your Mac Mini. So what I do in that case... For whatever reason, Keyboard Maestro, which is my absolutely favorite automation program in the whole planet, um, it doesn't understand the idea of the screensaver. And while there are some workarounds for that, the best thing to do is go acquire this amazing program in the App Store called Event Scripts. Event Scripts is exactly what it sounds like. It's a program that runs... Uh, Apple scripts whenever an event occurs. In this case, I've got it set up that whenever the screen password is unlocked, to turn my Display 3 driver on. And whenever the password is locked, or whenever the screensaver is started, rather, so the system is about to shut down and go to sleep, for lack of a better description, it turns this display three or the display link driver off. So the idea is this, the screensaver comes on, I'm running the aerial screensaver, it's very beautiful, ooh, ah, and at that time, this third display, the one that's running on display link, it turns off and then the system sleeps for however long that the system is going to sleep, no issue there. And when it decides to wake up, then the display link driver is still asleep. My Apple Watch can unlock the system. And then once the system is unlocked because the screensaver is now off, Event scripts fires and it turns a display link driver back on. This takes a few seconds. My display three comes on everything works just great. So that's how that works and it works great for me and that solved my problem. So there are limitations with the M1 Mac Mini and the main limitation, the one that impacts the most people, I think, is actually that you can only drive two displays natively. The workaround that everyone is using is a display link driver, but display link drivers have their own limitations, mostly that when they're running, there are other things that you can't do. For me, the, the key to solving that problem has been to create automation using a tool called Keyboard Maestro or another tool 
called event scripts to automate around that so that the display link driver is only running when I absolutely need it and it's moved out of the way when it's preventing these other things from happening that I need to happen. That's all I got for you today. I hope you're enjoying your M1 Mac as much as I am. I think these machines are amazing. I'm so happy for Apple and excited about the future. And I hope to see you on another video soon. I'm Mark Mason. If you want to hear more from me and what I normally do, which is talk about marketing, check me out at latenightim.com. Thanks. Have a great day. Building your business one night at a time.